All right, guys. Today I wanted to talk about two different topics that have been sort of uh, revolving around my mind these past couple of weeks. So first topic is I'm going to remind you again about the book I wrote, the latest one I wrote, which is Selecting the Right Dog Trainer. Uh, that book I did not write for dog trainers, unlike the other books. Every book has sort of a bit of a theme. The very first book, Common Myths About Dogs, that was written for pet owners, also for trainers, but mainly the intent was for pet owners. That book is called Common Myths About Dogs. The reason I wrote that one is because there's just so many things I kept hearing. Even dog trainers would say these things that would make me go, don't you know that that's not true? You're a dog trainer. You should know that. And, you know, some of the stuff that I would hear pet owners say, like, you know, they would say things um, that just seems to be conventional knowledge, but it's not conventional knowledge. I mean, it, it it's sort of like uh, I accepted truth, so to speak, that were not truth at all. So I made a, I compiled a bunch of those and just released it at the time. I released it at the time and, and it was made sort of for the average pet owner, you know, with a little bit of emphasis on, on the dog trainer. And the second book I wrote was Info Every Dog Trainer Should Know. That was just a compilation of a bunch of different articles I wrote over the years, put them together. Again, the emphasis was a lot for the dog trainer third book I wrote, which is my favorite book so far, which is the decoy book. That one I wrote with the help of very talented protection helpers in different areas from sport work, like French ring, Belgian ring, all the way to police work. So I, I really love that one. The last one I wrote is, or the last one I released rather is selecting the right dog trainer. This is the one that I wanted to talk a little bit about, selecting the right dog trainer. That's not obviously for dog trainers. If you're a dog trainer, um, this book would be helpful for you because it'll give you some sort of guideline as to you know, sort of what red flags to stay away from. But in general, I wrote it primarily for the consumer, for the pet owner. And the reason I wrote it is because... I just kept hearing these shitty things that kept happening, you know, um, and so it took a while to write it because it wasn't a priority. I just wrote it sort of on the sideline. I, I really started writing it right after I started writing the decoy book. So I started writing the decoy book shortly after that, right, right around that time frame. I started writing, selecting the right dog trainer. I just, it just didn't really, it just kind of sat there for a while and then I would just you know, revisit it, work on it a little bit here and there. And then I went through a period where I just I just wrote like a bunch. I just did a lot of it. And and I finished sort of like did the the bulk of it, you know, in like a in like a few days or a week, something along those lines. But then releasing it, you know, there's there's more to writing a book than just typing it up and then sending it and go, here's my book. Uh because a lot because it was self published. So uh I sort of battle with a little bit of the the hassles that go with writing a book, self-publishing a book, you know, hiring an editor, doing revisions, stuff like that, right? So that's that's the that was the whole process of writing that book. But the past couple of weeks I was reminded why that book is so important. Because there are two two individuals, two people I know Okay, that really one of these people actually inspired me to write this book originally. When I first was like, what the freaking A? It was because of the stories I kept hearing about this one person. And I thought to myself at the time, this person gets paid by pet owners. People who people who love their pets are paying her and people like her So that they will, in turn, not only not do what they are getting paid for, but to actually neglect their their dogs. And so, you know, some some of the stories that I heard about this particular person and others are in that book. You know, I'm, I don't say names. 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get dramatic about this. You know, like, I could go, well, well, shoot men up and contact that person and let them know what a piece of shit they are. But, um, you know, what what does that do? Like, what, what does that do for them? Are they going to stop being a piece of shit? No. They, they didn't do anything to me personally. If they did, if they said something to me personally or something about me, yeah, I would contact them and be like, hey, did you say that? I do that, by the way. Whenever I hear that, I contact, I go to the source immediately. So, yeah, I would do that if it was, if that was the case, but it's not, right? So, I was like, there are people that are putting their trust on on, on her and people like her. And this other guy, too, same thing. You know, I know these two people. They're, like, personable. The The one guy, very personable. I mean, I like the guy. And I just kept hearing stories from people close to him, people who worked for him for like a long time, right? More than one, more than one person and other people relatively close to him uh, that that worked in close contact with him. And some of the stuff that I kept hearing about not only the way he treats people once he's comfortable with them, but the the. the way he treats dogs, and I've seen footage, I've seen video, it's just despicable, completely despicable. And, I mean, no no regards for the animal at all. Some of the stuff that gets done and, and that they do and that they get away with, a lot of it just gets swept under the rug. And I'm like, there are people, like, losing their entire business and their reputation sinking freaking through the through the freaking toilet going right down the toilet for less than what these people are getting away with but you know the the industry is not regulated that's a good thing but at the same time it's kind of a shitty thing i say it's a good thing in a in a way because who's going to regulate the industry it's going to be a purely positive movement <laughs> That uh, that is gonna tell you, well, you know, doing this is inhumane. Doing that is inhumane. You can't say no. Uh, this, this, and that. Nope, you're done. You can't train dogs. So that that would be my guess as to who would regulate the industry if somebody ever did. And uh, so it's good that it's not regulated, but at the same time, you get a bunch of shit bags like this, like these. And now you have that. So the next best thing I can do is I can do that. I can do that for my community, my community being the dog training industry. I'm not going to go blast them. What is that going to do? That just makes me look like a like a fool. Like, oh, I, this person does this. Can y'all believe that? Let's blast this person. No, I, I, I just, I don't think so. I, I don't, that, that's just, that's just drama. You know, it, it, and just, it doesn't, at, at the end of the day, even if I did blast these two people, what is that going to do? It's just going to get rid of those two people. You know how many shitbags like them there are out there in the industry? So many. So my way of dealing with it or doing something about it is to write this book. And I was reminded recently, God, I'm glad. I mean, I, I did something, you know. I did something. I definitely did something. Uh, hopefully, it reaches a lot of people. So uh, the book is, uh, it's priced very inexpensive. And it's not a huge book, so it's not a, a long read. It's it's a very short read. It's very, very close to the, to the length of the first book, which is, I don't remember how many pages, but it's, it's, it's a relatively short read. It's not a pamphlet, but it's, you know, it's not a thick book. So you can it, you can definitely read it pretty quick, and um, and it's it's laid out in a way that you know you could quickly get to the points. So if you're an average consumer, you don't have to read it for like you know hours and hours for you to have sort of an idea. It's very direct and to the point. I'm gonna be doing an audio on that as well and i'm going to be sharing that to as many people as i can i'm going to send it to as many people as i can consumers uh pet owners anybody anybody who who cares to listen to it i'm going to share it and uh 
I suggest, I mean, because it is about it is about the industry. It's not about. I'm not saying, hey, uh, you know, hire me, will, as the trainer, because that's really what I'm telling you is that that you that I am the right dog trainer. My picture is in the cover, but it's not because because I'm implying that I am the right dog trainer. I'm just I just picked a picture that would sort of look relatable to that. Uh, a lot of my other pictures are not very relatable because usually we have a lot of action shots for the protection club. Um, and this one I thought was, this one was, I, I thought was reasonable. So yeah, it's not a, the, the book is not a resume for Will, for me. The book is truly genuinely not, th- there is no self-interest there. It's just, here are some red flags. Please be careful when you select the dog trainer because here's what they do when you don't select the right dog trainer. And then it's got the stories. Very to the point. Now you can find it again. Go to Amazon. Search uh, William Garrido, G-A-R-R-I-D-O on the search bar. And um, and you're going to find all four of my books right there. So that's one. You know, I, I just, I don't like that that there are so many people that are not held accountable for their actions. You know, I'm not the softest guy when it comes to training dogs. I'm not a purely positive trainer. I do give corrections, but there are some things that I, I could never see myself doing. I, I just could not could not possibly do a fraction of the some of the things that I, I have seen people do and that I hear people do. I just couldn't. I couldn't live with myself. And it's unfortunate that there are people that are getting paid by by pet owners who don't know about this. So again, that's the book. The audio should be coming out soon. I haven't even started working on it to be honest with honest with you, but I am. It is one of the things on my list of things to do. The next thing I wanted to go over, I wanted to kind of unload a little bit on the uh, on something that I've been doing. Which is I've been taking, I've been taking uh, business slash marketing coaching. Uh, I just some of you guys might be aware of this or not, but I I worked for I used to work for Starmark Academy, School for Dog Trainers, and I worked there for seven years total, and I had a blast. It was a great time. You know, I left on good terms. Very recently, I gave a basically a not basically I gave a four month note four month notice. And you know, I left on a handshake. It was it was great. I had a I had a great time. Left on good terms. I still think very highly of that company, and the staff that is currently running the academy. I I feel very confident in their ability to, to um to maintain the the name and the reputation. I I got a lot out of it when I was a student. I you know I I feel like I definitely did. Uh, provide a huge service as uh, as a staff as an instructor for the academy and and I feel the current staff is doing a great job too but I just left that I closed that chapter of my life it was time for me to move on and now I'm doing this thing on my own this dog training business and I did have a dog training business in the past uh, but this time I want to do it different you know we're doing things different uh, we have, uh, uh, we're looking at it more of a, uh, you know, more of a brand, brand statement. So I have been developing the dog training as my passion, social media and the brand for several years now. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to expand it into. I wanted to make it, you know, much bigger than that. So I've been taking business coaching. Uh, I've gone through three different business coaching programs now. And I've been reading books on the topic of marketing and sales for the past couple of years. So I've been I've been very invested in it. And I'm I've been literally reinvesting not just my time but also finances into this. You know, some something that a lot of people don't do and I ch- I choose to do it. It's I mean the amount of money that I pay f- for that it's it's maybe not not scary but it's 
but it's a decent amount. Like that money could have definitely gone to other things, other other places in the business. But um, but I feel like to me that's a huge. It has the potential to to have big returns. So the part that I wanted to talk about is the marketing part. There are some things that that I, I just don't feel comfortable with, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what those things are. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I'm learning too. So I'm giving you a little bit of a free class here on the on the marketing coaching that I've been taking. You know, from the all three different companies, three unrelated different companies, but they're marketing companies. So there's a lot of online emphasis, right? Like uh, digital products emphasis, which is something that I I do want to move towards. So, um, what I don't like. I do like the creativity and it's very service oriented, right? So basically it revolves around create a relationship with your prospects, you know, offer them value, give them, you know, make them feel connected. All of that makes sense to me. So I, I am putting a lot of emphasis on that and I have been for a while too, honestly, you know, like the a lot of free content that I've been putting on YouTube I got over 700 videos on YouTube and a lot of that content is like actual detailed explanations of what I do. And uh and I've been doing that for some time. So I have been, you know, that that is one box that I can check from the uh from the marketing, from the coaching. There's a bunch of other things. I'm not saying I'm not summing it up into just that. Some of you guys I'm sure have taken business classes and and business coaching. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm sure that, um, uh, you know, that, uh, that was probably something that, that you have seen offer value, make connections, right? Build trust. But, uh, you know, the one thing that I, I, I don't fully resonate with is the marketing language. I just, I'm not a fan of like the marketing language is, not very transparent. So I'll give you some examples. Like one huge one is creating hype, right? So creating hype, using your social media to create hype. You basically go on your social media and you write something like this. Guys, something great is about to happen. And that's it. That's just one example. That's creating hype. I've seen people do this. I've seen other dog trainers and other big names do something like this. And I'll give you a, I'll give you a direct example. Ivan Balabanov, before he launched his TWC training without conflict, I'm not talking shit about Ivan. Okay, I just want to let you know right now. I I like his style. I've invested money in his product. You know, I bought his book, and uh, and I bought his videos. So I like the guy. I like the trainer. I like the guy. Personally, I don't have a problem with him at all. Um, you know, so I, I, I think highly of Ivan Balabanov. But I, I just want to tell you this one part. Before he launched his TWC, his business, I, I saw it, right? He was pretty quiet. I mean, he would post some stuff and videos and stuff like that. But um, But I remember... I saw that one post. It was like, I want to say maybe a few a few years ago now, maybe more. However long he's had that that uh, TWC thing before it, it it expanded to the point it is now. He put a post that was pretty much what I just suggested. What what they suggest, which is that hype post. Something great is about to happen. Right, that's your hype post. That's supposed to make people go, "Oh my God, what's happening?" And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> but when I saw that post, I was like, "Oh my God, you're doing that!" Because you know, again, I've been reading about this for years now. So when I saw that, I'm like, "I know exactly what you're doing. You're you're making a hype post. That's a hype." And I've seen other trainers do the same thing. So I see it. I recognize recognize it instantly. I see that hype post. Guys, something great is about to happen. Uh, or something along those lines, and and you recognize it. You go, oh, man. and then shortly after that, another hype post. Basically, you do like a countdown of hype posts, and then you open it. And you go, guys, I have this product. Then you do your launch, right? You launch the product, 
and you create a hype about around that. And there is other, you know, other language. Like for instance, Ivan did not do this, but one of the things that they say is this, you know, something along the lines of guys, you know, people don't like to, you know, that they're scared by the concept of sales. So sales calls, we don't call them sales calls. We call them strategy calls. <laughs> call them a strategy call. When you have to talk to a prospect and it is going to involve them spending a good amount of money, tell them you want to bring them on a, on a strategy call or an onboarding call. That's another term. Um, you know, you've probably seen this with the webinars too, like the webinars. Like you've, you've seen these posts. I'm sure you've seen the ads that go. If you take this free, another keyword right here, masterclass. Right, you've seen the the master class webinars. Like, you know, like if you do, you know, if if you sign up for this webinar, I'm gonna show you this, this, and this, and this, and this, which they do, they do. But basically, the webinar is just like an an hour of marketing hype. It's it's an uh, it's a one hour or however long it lasts. Sometimes it's 45 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour. Sometimes it's over an hour that free webinar, right? That, um, uh, <laughs> you know, that, um, that masterclass, that's what they call it. The masterclass is really just a sales pitch. That's what the masterclass is. It's a, it's a sales pitch. Um, and they do offer you some value, but they're not really there to like make your life better. The company, the, the, the person that is putting this together is there to get as much money as possible. That's what that's what they tell us. Do this so that you can get paid as much as possible. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with with making money. I love making money, right? Who doesn't? Uh, I just don't like the. I don't like the the the. the I don't like this guy's language. So, um, you know, just call it a webinar. <laughs> You know, don't call it a master class. That's like a very popular thing. I wanna in this master class, I wanna show you this, this, and this and this. Dude, it's a sales pitch. Now don't you don't have to call it a sales pitch, but just call it, you know, this video. So to me, just using terms like that just doesn't seem genuine. Like another one is if you have to jump on a sales call, you don't call it a sales call, right? They go, Don't call it a sales call. That's very scary for people. You know, they, they don't want to attend that. So just call it a strategy call. Call it an onboarding call. Fair enough. I'm okay with that. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's a sales call, right? It's a sales call. Um, maybe, maybe don't call it a strategy. Maybe just call it, hey, let's jump on a call so we can talk about that. I don't know. Just... Maybe I'm just not fully bought into some of these concepts yet. Maybe I should, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm at a point where I just it just doesn't seem genuine. If if it's not genuine to me, it just doesn't feel right. I'm willing to change and adapt and get out of my comfort zone, but not at the expense of compromising who I am. It just doesn't seem right. So um. You know, I can't do the the challenge. Another one is the challenge where they're like, oh, you know, sell them on this six, you know, make a six-week challenge. It's really a six-week course. Challenge just has like a nice tone to it. Like when you you call it a challenge, people go, oh, my God, I want to do that challenge. Right? I want to do that challenge. It's a course. You're buying a course. That's what it is. That six-week challenge challenge is a course and uh, you know i i get it it's it's the whole funnel system you bring them in the funnel and you upsell them as much as possible which i get hey, it's it's making money i don't have a problem with it. it's just part of making money you know um to me like if you tell me hey if, if i'm a consumer and you tell me hey will we're gonna jump on this sales call if you told me it was a sales call i would be okay with that uh, yeah, let's jump on that sales call. I don't have a problem with it. I I like to spend money. If the money, if the service, if the product is right, I will spend the money. I don't have a problem with that. I don't I don't care about it being cheap or nothing. If it's the right product, I want the right product. I don't care. 
I'm not going to do like tons of research just so that I could find something that's going to save me like a dollar <laughs> or, you know, like a, or an, an eighth of the price. If I'm going to, if I'm already going to pull my wallet to, to buy a service, a product, I'm going to spend the money. And obviously, I mean, I am, I am, I have taken three courses so i am implementing them i am following the the advice um i do want to say that i i did come up with a uh i did spend a, a good amount of time putting this course together it's uh it's it's on working dogs and owning a malinois in that course i go over how to select the right dog how to screen the right how how to screen the breeders so that you know you're getting it from a good breeder different ways to get the right working dog and once you have that right working dog how do you uh, do some selection testing how to work that dog i go over whether you should work your dog or not um you know things like that that i go in in detail in that course and it's got exclusive content. So the content in that course, you're not going to find on YouTube. You're not going to find it anywhere else, only through that course. So that one is a course. And, um, and you know, that's something that I, I, I did follow the advice. And I am doing something like that. And, uh, and I released it. So it's on dogtrainingismypassion.com if you want to check it out. It's on dogtrainingismypassion.com. And as you open DrTrainingIsMyPassion.com, whether it's on your cell phone or, or the desktop, you're going to see a green button that says uh, Malinois do's and don'ts or do's and don'ts of owning a Malinois. And it says the Malinois uh, course. It's a big button. You're going to hit it. It's going to take you right to that uh, page where you could buy access to the course The course. I've, I'm only pricing it at $97, very cheap compared compared to um, you know all the courses that are out there and this course is for the amount of information that I put in um, it's fairly priced so uh, $97 super maybe not super cheap but it's relatively inexpensive so go check it out if you want to um, or don't if you don't want to I'm okay with that too it's a perfectly acceptable answer uh, but you know, that, that's to me, that's a course, right? If I were to sign you up for a six-week course, I wouldn't call it a six-week challenge. I would just call it a six-week course. I wouldn't call it a, 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 a you know, a, a strategy call. I would just be like, hey, let's jump on a call where we can talk about, you know, how I can serve you or how I can help you. I don't have a problem calling it a sales call because to me, that's not a problem. If, if Again, if I was a consumer and you told me, Will, uh, I'm going to jump on a sales call with you, Pfft, okay, perfect. My answer is either going to be yes, and I'm in all the way, or it's going to be no, it's not for me. So, uh, another strategy, another thing that I've learned. Long posts. And this is very characteristic of marketing. Like you see it with, you probably see it with ads. If you've if you've scrolled through your Facebook and your Instagram, which I'm sure you do, you will occasionally see ads for whatever it is that you're interested in because the algorithms pick that up. So if you showed interest in fitness, you're going to get targeted ads for you on fitness, right? Anything. If you've ever looked up a uh, a wrench, you might get targeted ads because all these apps speak to each other. You might get targeted ads on tools or hardware, whatever. So you're going to be scrolling and you're going to see a picture that this is called a hook, right? So a post is gonna, that's going to grab you, a hook. And you're going to see the post. And it's going to be a long post. You probably have seen it, right? You've seen these ads. Probably you skip them. But occasionally you might, you know, the, the first line grabs your attention. So that's what they want. They want the hook, right? They want that first line to 
grab you. They want the picture, the image, the ad, the first line. As you're scrolling, as you're taking a shit on your toilet and you're going through your phone, as you're scrolling, they want that first line and that image for that targeted ad that went just for you. They want that one image or that first line to make you go, whoa, i got to stop scrolling. i got to read this. That's where the long posts come in. The long post, this person took their time typing it out, and it probably they didn't type it out. Here's what they did. You ready for this? If you ever seen a, a post, a long post like this, an ad, you're gonna you know what I'm talking about. It's not a genuine post. It is often a script. You know how I know that? Because I have access to those scripts. They're like they're like. Um, templates basically and they go it's a bunch of blanks and you know they'll be like all right say something like this you know uh, have you ever wondered why present the problem and then in a different part of the sentence present the solution and remind them of the problem and you know remind them of the pain and so the long post is meant to put you in a semi-emotional roller coaster Whereas you're reading this, the long post is supposed to build trust and it's supposed to make you go, oh, wow, this product is really going to solve my problem. Oh, wow, this person actually knows what I want. So that's another one. It's a strategy, right? Now, I do occasionally do long posts, but they're not with the with the purpose of grabbing you so, so, that, so that you can spend money on me. I don't have a problem with that. Right? If you want to spend money on me, hey, dude, great. If you want to just give me money, which I I don't do that, right? <laughs> I can't I can't do the GoFundMe. Like when I when I needed money, um, at some point I was like, shit, I gotta you know I, I gotta make this amount of money. I started selling the book with a, a a video course. This was like some time ago. You might have bought it. I sold a bunch of them, so I was selling the the book. The book was free. It's another marketing strategy like free book but really it's not free you're gonna pay for shipping so once you select once you put your credit card information on my on my funnel right on my page if you bought a book from me this way not from amazon but this way you were part of this i had a page free book you're like oh shit free book that's a hook that grabs you like there's a free book i'm gonna click on that and then I give you my sales pitch on that on that page, right? It could be bullet points or it could be a video of me talking. I think it was a video of me talking and I think it was also bullet points or a paragraph where I'm telling you why this book is awesome, which it is. So you're, you're buying the, you know, the book is telling you, yeah, this is what you're going to get. This is what's in the book. And you're like, man, that's awesome. And, it, and the page will say free. Like, that's awesome. It's a free book. But then I go, but you got to pay for shipping. Fair enough. I mean, it's a free book. I'm just paying for shipping. Got it. I mean, that that's fair. I'm paying for the shipping, right? I'm going to ship it to you. So you're paying for the shipping. You're essentially getting a free book. Um, so here's the thing. Once you put your credit card information on that on that page and you go, yes, I will take that free book, I instantly do something called an upsell. So now I have your credit card information on that on that software, on that on that uh, page, right? You click send me my book, you instantly get taken to a page that tells you, hey, prospect buyer, since you've already put your credit card to get the book, do you also want to get this other book? So now you have an upsell and I've done it. I've, I've sold a bunch of books that way. If you, Again, if you did not get my book through Amazon and you guys wrote through, through a different page, you got it through my funnel, which is perfectly fine. It's a win-win. I get paid, um, and I'm also offering you something that you want. So, you know, now you have your credit card. You don't have to put your credit card information there anymore. You've already put it on once, so you could pay for the shipping. And just before you leave, I'm reminding you, hey, since you've already put your credit card and you're already buying this book, do you want me to include this second book? It's going to be the same shipment. It's just going to be an extra three dollars or an extra five dollars and all you have to do is you just have to hit a check mark and say yes i'll take that second book not that that worked you know i got to serve you more you got more 
I'm also getting more in return. And then when you hit, yep, I'm going to get that second book, I give you another offer. And this is called a sales funnel. So you're ready to leave. You already got your second book that you didn't even plan on getting. You just wanted the free book, right? But now you got your second book. It's like going to the store for uh, for uh, ketchup or something else, and then you come back with an entire basket of groceries. So now you got your second book, and right before you leave, I go, hey, I know, I'll give you another page. Hey, real quick, since you've already put your credit card, you've already got this book in the second book, let me make you a one-time offer, only available here. And uh, this offer is a digital package. So in this digital package, I'm going to go over, you know, and it's exclusive content. I'm going to go over, you know, how to do this, this, and this. And, um, and now, you know, if you want to get the entire thing, the entire thing will only cost you like $97 or $97, right? So now you came originally to get your free book, but I got to serve you more. And now you, you end it with two books and an entire video course. I've done that before. Um, it's very ethical. I'm not stealing money from you. I'm giving you things and I'm giving you the option. I'm not stealing money and going, Hey, by the way, I also charge your credit card a little bit extra. And I gave you something you didn't want. You have the option at any moment to say, no, I don't want that. So it's just sales strategy. I've done it. It works great. Um, but, but some things I, I just, I, I don't, I'm not okay with like changing the language. If I'm going to sell you something, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to sell it to you. That way you can tell me, yes, I want to buy it. I want to definitely take that offer or you could say no. So, yeah. So the whole, you know, if you, if you ever see a long post that seems to take you in a sort of an emotional roller coaster and it makes you go, oh my God, they, this person has a solution to my problem. You're following a post that was originally a script, a template. And if you're happy with that and you're willing to get that and, and they're happy with it, hey, everybody wins. I'm happy for everybody. I myself cannot do that. I'll be the consumer, like I'll, I've bought stuff and I'm like, yeah, you got me. <laughs> you know, that, that's a good post. That was a good hook. You definitely got me. All right, I'm going to give you my money so I can buy this thing because your hook definitely grabbed me. It worked. I'm aware. I'm aware of it. It makes sense. Uh, I, You know, I was part of your funnel. You got me and I'm happy with it. Uh, I just, I, I cannot do the, the long posts with the hype posts and the, another one is false sense of scarcity. That's a huge one. If you ever seen one of these ads that have the countdown, you've seen these, right? The countdown, you know, hurry up. You only have five minutes left before all access is cut off. Another one too, another big one, because scarcity makes people act. You create a limited amount or a limited time, people now want to rush. They go, shit, I have to get it before it's all gone. Here's the secret, guys. It's never gone. Never, ever gone. Right? Like another one is when they're like, oh, in this master class, I'm going to show you this, this, and this, but hurry up. We only have six spots available. Once this fills up, we might never do another another uh you know um you know another master class and this bullshit they will they they're going to have one the next day and the next day and the next day um so the false sense of urgency is a marketing strategy cuz it truly makes people act again i can't if if i don't have truly if i truly don't have scarcity i'm not going to tell you i have scarcity if i have a thousand books in a box and uh you know and i'm selling it and i you know you're like the second person i'm not gonna go hurry up i only got three left i'm gonna be like no we got plenty i got a thousand in here but uh but you know scarcity makes people act so it makes people want to spend their money even more and makes them spend money makes them want to spend money even faster so you're not gonna see those posts from me if you see 
marketing type and hype type posts from me, it means one of two things. A, I drank the Kool-Aid and I definitely bought into those whole strategies and I'm okay being a little bit disingenuous. Or B, the other option is I hired a marketing company to run my social media. If that happens, then I mean I don't, I'm not opposed to that. Right? That'd be one less thing for me to do. I'm 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 talking about the future here. I'm not talking about like next week. I'm still gonna keep posting those <laughs> those memes and and the doctrine videos and all of that stuff. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Uh, this is sort of a little bit of a venting uh, episode. Um, I'm making some announcements, though. I mean, I am telling you about the book, uh, Selecting the Right Dog Trainer. I am telling you about the course I made on owning a Malinois. And I got one lesson. This is definitely more, a little bit of a hype, okay? But it's an announcement. I'm not going to keep it vague. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, guys, something amazing is about to happen. Stay tuned. No, that would not be genuine. I know what it is. You're going to know what it is by the end of this episode. I am uh, working on an app so that you could have access to my stuff with an app. It's much easier than having to go to YouTube and having to like search you know, your channels or it's easier than having to log into, you know, doctoring is my passion or having to look for this. I'm going to have a bunch of content on the app so that instantly just with your, uh, with, with the thumbprint, you can access whatever you need to instantly. There is definitely going to be some, 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 uh, sales that will take place within the app, like a lot of apps, um, but I am planning on having free content on there as well. So I just think the app is going to make it easier for you to connect, for us to connect, uh, for me to connect with you. And it's going to you know, allow you to stay connected and not even worry about uh, not having to leave. Because I know on YouTube, if you wanted to go do something else, you go do that something else, that YouTube, that video stops playing and, and, and you're done. With this, you'll have the ability to watch whatever video you're watching. And if you need to go do something else, the video should still be playing on the background because it's an app. It's not like a website. It's not um, a, a search engine like YouTube. It's going to be the app. So I'm excited about that. It is something that I've been thinking about for some time. And finally, we just pulled the trigger on that. It is another big investment. Things sometimes get a little bit scary <laughs> because I like to invest. Uh, I like to invest our money into growth. So I'm either investing it on me, you know, through the through the marketing or, you know, or the, you know, the 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 classes that I'm taking, the coaching that I'm taking, really it's group coaching, but yeah, but still the coaching that I'm taking um, or reinvesting it in things like this, you know, like the, the, uh, the app that, that was a, that's a big chunk of money. <laughs> Developing a, an app is not cheap. That's a big chunk of money, but, uh, but I feel like it's, it's a way for me to serve you better for me to connect with you better. So stay tuned. I'm super excited about that. So remember, stay tuned with the app. It's going to come out this year. Uh, check out the book, Selecting the Right Dog Trainer, and spread it as much as you can. It is for the benefit of our industry. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and also check out that course that I just made on owning a Malinois. Okay? So go to doctoringismypassion.com. And you will see a button there that will take you to the course. So make sure you check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.